What is up guys, this is the Average Johnny coming back to you with yet another Average video. And today I wanted to do a follow up to a video that just recently got very popular and just starting to get some recognition and I just thought maybe, yeah, I should do a follow up because there actually have been a lot of comments on my Simpsons Hit and Run Top 10 Hardest Missions list and a lot of you guys were just telling me about how there are some missions that I probably missed out on or some that I left out that should have been on the list and I honestly could not disagree with you guys. I thought I, I looked back, I played them again and I realized, yeah, some of these were actually a lot tougher than I remembered. And you guys just reminded me of some of the childhood missions that I had to play that just put me through hell and through a lot of rage as well. So, yeah, I had to take that into consideration and I decided to make this follow-up video. So here are more missions that are difficult in The Simpsons Hit and Run. If you're new to my channel and probably feel like there are missions that I missed out on, check out my top 10 Simpsons Hit and Run Hardest Missions list. It's probably going to be on there, whatever you're probably thinking about. And just enjoy the bad commentary. You know, that video was made months ago, but oh well, it's up there anyways. But yeah, anyways, let's get right to this. I hope you guys enjoy it. Let the raging reemerge. Quick Cash. This is another mission from level 5, or a Pooh's missions as well, in which you have to destroy an armored car and avoid any police. Now, in this particular situation, the part about getting rid of the police is actually very easy. However, it is destroying the armored car that can be a real pain in the ass. The armored car has some sort of insane durability that prevents it from being destroyed too easily. And not only that, the game expects you to use Snake's car and use it to blow up the armored car. While it's easy to keep up with the high speed, the bandit car does not have high capabilities when it comes to power. In fact, it's very easy to damage the car and just blow it up yourself. So you have to take your time and grab wrenches to fix your car whenever it's necessary and just keep trying to destroy that car with all the patience that you have. The only thing keeping this from my top 10 was just a big sigh of relief of not having this be a time mission. Otherwise, it would have just been hell and I would have definitely put it in my top 3. It was actually revealed that there was actually going to be a 3 minute limit to destroying the car. But let's just be glad that insane idea did not happen. Fox Nergily. Fox Nergily was a mission where Bart had to accompany the comic book guy to Java server so he can be the first to write his review of a film he didn't like online. In this mission you had to race the nerd to Java server which seems simple and all however the problem comes with the, the fact that the nerd car is just at least a whole star faster than the comic book guy's Kremlin so you basically can't make a mistake, you can't crash, you can't slow down or any other setback of any kind because the nerd car will most likely leave you in the dust and just ruin the whole thing for you. While this isn't one of the most difficult missions in the game, I believe, there is just a good chance you'll have to redo this a few times depending on your driving ability, of course. Same thing applies to Lisa's first mission in level 3, where you do basically do the same thing just in a different map. But Vox Nerdily is just another mission that tests your abilities to control the wheel. Good luck on this one, that's all I'm gonna say. Bonfire of the Manatees. Well shit man, look who's back to bug the hell out of us. Freaking Cletus! If you guys remember my last video, I mentioned the mission Better Than Beef from level 2 where Bart helps Cletus collect roadkill and avoid Apu. Well, in this mission, Lisa actually helps Apu take the roadkill from Cletus so he doesn't end up selling it to anyone for food. Just when you think this will be a simple hit and collect, somehow Cletus' car gets some sort of magical turbo upgrade that causes his car to become unexplainably faster and therefore adds difficulty to the mission. Like what? Not only that, but in this level, the cars in traffic do sudden lane changes that cause you to crash and they don't hesitate to get in your way at all. So you have to get through them and hit Cletus in a limited time, which is not the simplest of tests. Despite being able to drive Apu's badass car very early into the game, it doesn't help that Cletus uses the acceleration cheat code in the game just to piss you off. But credit where it's due, Cletus does do a good job of challenging your skills. Slithery Sleuthing once again, we have that green bar of doom I mentioned in the previous video. This particular mission on level 3, or Elisa's level, is about helping Chief Wiggum find 3 strikes against Snake in order to bust him. So as you drive in Wiggum's car, you have to collect 3 pieces of evidence that Snake drops onto the ground. And let me tell you something, if you don't know about Snake's bandit car, let me tell you what the half is with this mission. Snake's car is able to drive pretty fast and make some sharp swerves and turns that can end up leaving the 3 pieces of evidence in the most random of spots. And some may even cause you to crash into objects. One small delay and Snake can easily drive off and lose you, lose you due to the high velocity his car has. That just tops off the fact that you can't miss any of the objects otherwise you'll fail the mission anyways. So having to keep up with this fast car and not missing the objects will be a lot to ask for if your driving abilities aren't up to par in this game. It's a great challenge and the only thing that keeps you from actually hating this mission is just listening to Chief Wiggum's hilarious commentary. The dude is just pretty funny man. 
Sellouts. This mission was Bart's final quest in level 2, and this mission did exactly what finales are supposed to do. Give you a challenge, yet test your patience and abilities to redo missions every single time you fail. The concept was simple. Destroy a set of cars giving off cell phone signal that would interfere with Professor Frank's monster truck robots if they were still in use. Bart's job was basically just to destroy every single one of them, in a limited time of course. The problem with this mission was merely the fact that the cars you were limited at to at the time had power to do just the job but were very limited in speed and therefore made it tougher to hit the cars without missing and crashing into buildings. Whether you used the Plow King or Mr. Plow, you were still likely to struggle with this one. Sometimes you would wreck your car and sometimes you would, the cars would keep getting away. It's strange because even though you gain more time with every car you destroy, it becomes more difficult with slow trucks to drive with. After a while, it was just easy to get annoyed and cause some rage, especially if you had to retry the mission over and over. Whether it was the limited speed of the car, whether it was the oncoming traffic, or whether it was just the police coming in in general to stop you, this mission was just going to be a tough one regardless. And I definitely have you guys to thank for reminding me how hard it was to remain patient because it did feel like a drag after 3 tries due to it being kind of lengthy, but yes, sellouts for sure another difficult mission in the game. Monkey see, monkey do Weird, suddenly I just realized level 2 was a lot more difficult than I remember. This is one that I decided to save for last because you guys just kept mentioning it and I really can't argue with what you guys had to say. Once again we are on level 2 and this time, Bart was asked to help Dr. Nick in reacquiring all the monkeys that have escaped from his lab. For this mission, Bart was required to buy the Mr. Plow from Homer and collect all the monkeys. Now let me tell you guys everything wrong with this damn mission. First things first, the monkeys are tough to find if you don't know your way around the map and playing this for the first time definitely shows that I didn't study this area enough and it just pissed me off. They are scattered over a huge portion of the map, some including places where it was a hit or miss on one of the ramps and just the fact that it was easy to crash into cars, people and objects all together that can just slow you down. But for me I think the worst part is the music that gets stuck in your head as you retry this appalling experience as you're yelling at your TV. The bright side of this is just the fact that it, is easy, it just becomes easier as you learn the map and doesn't really require retries after a while. However, this is one I would have and should have included in my top 10 given all the rage modes I had with this one. Monkey see, monkey do definitely deserves a spot in infamy. So these were just a couple more missions from the Simpsons in a run that I thought were very difficult. And it was all thanks to you guys, because if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't remember how much these missions actually did bug me a lot. And I just went with the more memorable ones for the first video that I did. But hopefully you guys did enjoy that. I know this is a game that a lot of you enjoyed, even though despite all the rage that we all had when we were kids. But yeah, hopefully once again you enjoyed that video. Uh, subscribe, like, comment. Be ready for more Simpsons Hit and Run lists, maybe top videos, maybe just regular lists in general. And just be looking out for any more gaming content. They should be coming out very soon. Finals week is almost over. It's almost summertime, so expect a lot more in the near future. So once again, uh, hopefully you guys have a great day, and I will see you in the next one.